Good morning, everyone out there. It's John again from the Super Awesome Geek Show. Pod, the podcast. <laughs> you can find it on iTunes at Super Awesome Geek Show. Go right to our website, superawesomegeekshow.com. And obviously we have this YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to, to find out about some cool toys. That's mostly what we put up is toy-related stuff on the YouTube channel. On the podcast, we talk about all things geeky. We, got, we talk about TV shows, we talk about comic books, we talk about movies, we talk about every subject under the wind. Even sports has come up from time to time, because a lot of us are big Seahawks fans and uh, hockey fans. Thunderbirds and silver tips around here. I think mostly Thunderbirds we like. I don't pick a team for hockey, I just go to enjoy watching it. But uh, I'm a Seahawks fan. Go Hawks! The road to 50 starts here, right? <laughs> but anyways, I also love thrift store hunting and discount stores. I'm one of those collectors that I am extremely poor. I don't have a, a large income. So I weekly, my friends and I, some of the co-hosts on the show, Jason, Rob, a few others, we, we hunt. We hunt. We go to... Value Villages, we go to various thrift stores around Seattle, Half Price Books, um, we go everywhere we can, any kind of discount store we can stumble upon, Goodwills, and we're just trying to hunt for the deals. Well, I found a deal at a discount store yesterday that just kind of blew my mind, and uh, I'm a little afraid to tell you what I paid for this guy. $12.50. Uh, Steve Austin himself, the six million dollar man with the box, uh, not in the best condition box wise. Figure looks great, but I think there's one feature or two features that I will not be able to use on the guy. But since he looks cool, he makes for a great display. And if some of those things don't work, well, we'll find out how well they are in this video. But uh, I'm suspecting it's just gonna look nice on the shelf <laughs> but hey for that price you can't beat it right I mean discount stores all the way so uh, anyone out there get to thrifting get to discounting and happy hunting cuz you do find some good stuff here and there if you just have a lot of patience alright I'm gonna bring you guys in closer put up a backdrop and show you these things in detail give you a good look at the box I got the instructions in there so uh, that's a plus. Yeah. Here we go. Let me bring up the backdrop, get Gene closer. So here he is. Colonel Steve Austin, the six million dollar man. Look how awesome the 70s style box art is. He can lift up an engine. I'm so glad to have the engine. I think that's pretty cool. His outfit is just pretty neat. He's got a nice little patch that says the six million dollar man on it. Like why would you wear that if that was your jumpsuit? Would you run around with a patch on you saying, I'm John? <laughs> Maybe I would, right? <laughs> Someone out there is going to make me a patch that says, John, the six million dollar geek. <laughs> and they're going to mail it to me, aren't you? Oh boy. I'm not, I don't even have six million dollars, and I'm not worth six million dollars. Maybe it'll say, John, the six dollar geek. <laughs> anyway, on to the review. I know I'm totally ridiculous. So I, I'm extremely happy that I found this thing at a discount store. The, wow, just, I gotta tell you, I've wanted one of these guys for probably 30 odd years. My brother and I, when we were kids, we had the six million dollar man here and we also had the Bigfoot that went along with him. Now I don't know if my, if my brother remembers that stuff, but I clearly do. I remember looking through the eyepiece and just like this kid is in the box and I remember like playing with the Bigfoot and I remember the Bigfoot commercial on TV. I was like, oh! So I mean, just such, wow. I mean, I'm so, so happy. This is uh, 1975, according to the packaging here. I think the show was on around 1973, right? 
wasn't it like 73 to 75, 73 to 76, somewhere in that range? I was born in 73, so I was a super little kid when this came out. Um, I don't know why my parents or whoever bought these things for us bought them for us. I guess they just figured it was a doll for a boy. And uh, that was going to be our doll, right? I remember my brother had a Indiana Jones that was about this size, and we also had a Klingon Commander from, it was probably from the first Star Trek, or the second one probably, from Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. That was about this same 12-inch 12, 12 scale is what they call these guys, along with the G.I. Joes. I think I had one G.I. Joe, and I had like a big G.I. Joe helicopter that was like blue and yellow, if I remember correctly. But uh, that was me rotating the box as you got, as I was talking, of course, you know, just so you could see. The box opens up. Let's see if you can get a good look at that in there without my hands being too much in the way. Again, this was Kenner. You know, the, the best toy company in the world, right? <laughs> He has a bionic power arm that can lift up the engine, a bionic eye that you as the kid can look through, and bionic arm modules, and you can get this uh, repair bay to perform robotic surgery on him. Great action pose there. Colonel Steve Austin, the $6 million man, the bionic man, trademark of Universal City Studios Incorporated. As I mentioned, I did. I do have the instructions. They were very fortunate to keep them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the box. Whoever sold it to the thrift store. Let me see if I can get in close and you can see those the uh, instructions here. So there's the whole thing. It's even got still got the thing to join the club and the important notice on the top. I'm going to see if I can get even closer so you can read some of this. Important! Only roll the skin from the wrist. Do not roll or pull down from the shoulder. To raise the right arm, push button in back at least 20 times. And the arm will raise very slowly. <laughs> 20 times. And you could join the Bionic Action Club by enrolling and filling out your name and address and all that stuff. Apparently whoever had this didn't bother joining the Bionic Action Club. But I think that little important notice just seems a little ridiculous. 20 times! <laughs> and then I can kind of fold this out of the way. And now let me show you some of these play features on the back of the box here. I'll have to move the camera up as it goes. But it came with but other, uh, other sets that were available were the Bionic Transport and Repair Station. So you could lay him down in there in the central bed part and all these little tube tubule dealies and stuff could you know, repair his bionic parts, and then he's got like some kind of, I don't know, is that a wash bin radar dish? I, who knows what the heck that thing is, but it's just a weird thing they stuck on the side. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like a cup holder, but turned sideways. Uh, wait, sure. <laughs> what, someone on there will tell me what that is, right? But these clearly, you can clearly tell what all this stuff is for. Uh, it says safe x ray unit to spot bionic trouble. Maybe that's the x ray dish. Okay. Real two power microscope. Ooh, so could you look through this thing? That'd be awesome. An operating computer system, revolving radar cone. Okay, that's the radar cone then. Why do you need a radar cone on a surgical station? I'll never know. 
and it converts to a rocket transport station. Okay, then maybe that's why you need the radar cone. All right, we've solved the mystery just by reading the back of the box. You know, I, I, I'm brilliant. Yeah, you guys can, it's okay. I'm, you know, I might know a lot about math, physics, and, you know, unified field theory, proving that gravity doesn't exist, but uh, apparently I can't figure out what a toy is for just by looking at it. <laughs> And his backpack radio comes with a cool helmet, some rope and stuff, a hook, and this awesome backpack with a nice little antenna sticking out the back. The crystal radio that really works and uses no batteries. Boy, I'd like to have that to see how that actually works. Move down the box. The typical General Mills Fun Group, six million dollar man proofs of purchase just like a lot of Kenner products had Kenner carried that over into their Star Wars line which was always a lot of fun cutting those out and mailing away to get your mail array to figures a couple of kids having a blast playing with all the three things oh that little wire is an earpiece that goes in so that thing that I thought was a hook is actually an earpiece so you can stuff or something. <laughs> oh, they made up a lot of play features on these toys back in the day. And then you could, uh, let's see, we'll get that feature in there. There's this plastic on his arm which I'll show you, like a rubber sleeve that slides down. And he's got bionic components that you can plug the surgical stuff into. And it you can perform bionic surgery. Roll back the lifelike skin on his right arm to reveal two removable bionic modules. Someday we'll have bionic modules to remove and plug stuff into and get on the internet. But this guy was way ahead of his time. I mean, he cost six million dollars to build. Jeez, that's a lot of money. I hope that's in focus enough for you to read it. But you put, this is his other play feature. He can lift the engine on his own. Can you, can you believe that? An action figure that actually has muscles. You push the button in a six million dollar man's back to activate his bionic arm. He can lift objects including the engine block that's in this package. Now the funny thing is, is I don't know if you caught it on the instructions or if I said it. Did I say it? Maybe I did say it. It's early in the morning. You have to click the button more than 20 times. That seems a little ridiculous to me. <laughs> but I guess he must have had like a ratcheting system inside there and it could it could do the uh, it could I, I suppose they were going for the simulation of the and how he was always doing everything in slow motion in the TV show and they had that noise. So I think it's supposed to simulate that. Every time you click it, the clicking noise kind of makes a nit 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 but not really from the show. It's just a click, click, click. But it's like as he lifts that engine up. Um, mine doesn't work. I've been trying it. I clicked it a hundred times and it didn't work. But we'll show you that stuff when we get to the actual doll, the figure. Action figure! They're not dolls, right? Boy, Taylor and Jeff would have just killed me for that one. <laughs> of, of talking toys. Check out their podcast. It's really cool. Okay, and the last feature, let me get up here and get yourself back another in focus. Once This one is the bionic eye. You can see through the bionic eye. When he was in the packaging, you were supposedly able to look through that hole lined up with his eye and you could see. Now, it claims it's a special wide-angle lens that lets you see everything Colonel Austin sees. Well, when I looked through the eye, I, I mean, it made everything so small, I could barely see what I was looking at. <laughs> if, uh, and I highly doubt my camera will allow you to look through the eye, but we'll try it, you know. All right, let's get on to the figure. Enough of the packaging, right? Oh, it's all blurry again.
Colonel Steve Austin, the six million dollar man with engine block and bionic action features. So I love his shoes. He's got socks. I'm digging that. A nice red jumpsuit. Very a lot of detail on the stitching. Um, his one sleeve appears to be longer than the other. Maybe just so that you could, it's easier for you to roll that up. Uh, this is the sleeve you roll up that has the uh, rubberized skin. I can, uh, they put that in quotes, skin. And uh, I can show you that when we get them in closer. Cool plastic hair. He's got a nice face sculpt. Um, this guy bends at every shoulder, elbow. Uh, his wrist joints, they spin around and move. His, his shoulders spin and move. He's got good leg joints. I mean, he's typical to like a Barbie doll or a G.I. Joe of that era. All those typical moving joints. He may even be... No, no, was G.I. Joe was Hasbro at this point and Kenner. So, um... And then Mattel had Barbie, so they probably were not sharing pieces. I, 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 I highly doubt they were. But they probably copied each other. You know, they probably, underneath, they probably look a lot the same. I just really dig his shoes. I think those things are so cool. And socks. He's got socks. <laughs> Comes with an engine block that he can clip into either hand. We'll get you some rotating views of this guy here as we... I'll spin him around. You can see that lever in his back. He's got scrunchy pants, kind of like pajamas, so they don't uh, roll up on him when he's running around, I guess. Let me show you some of those play features up close, and we'll give you a close up look at the figure. In just a second here. So here's the engine block that you get with it. Let's see, is that a standard Chevy V8? Probably out of an Impala. <laughs> I have no idea. I had a 1967 Impala when I was young. I think it was my second or third car. A boat of a car. That thing was amazing. We had so much fun as it in it when we were young. Matt, Brian, Reed, and Adrian can attest to that. All my friends in New York who grew up with me. It says 1975 on the back. I don't know if you can read any of that. 1975 General Mills Fun Group. Division of Kenner Products, Cincinnati, Ohio. This guy was catalog number 65000. And I guess they made these guys in Hong Kong. The engine block accessory. Woohoo! Highly doubt you could actually run any car with this. I don't know any engines that have a handle for easy in and out of your car. It was always a pain to <laughs> pull engines out. We used to have to throw ropes over trees on the farm and you'd yank one engine out, push the other car under, and use the tree limbs to drop the engine into the new car, you know. <laughs> but if we had Steve Austin, he could have just lifted it up with this nifty handle and done it for us real fast. Let's move into some of the features here. Give you a good... I gotta angle the camera for this one. Or, uh... Let's, uh let me back up a little bit here, do something so you can see... So here's a close-up of Steve Austin with his six million dollar man patch stuck right on the front of his jacket. You can see his head sculpt is pretty good. He's got a nice hairline. Got shot in the back of the head. That's how he died. No, no, no. That's the eyepiece that you can look through. Should we try to see if the camera will let you look through it? No chance. Trust me, you can look through it and it looks weird. So on the back there is that lever I was talking about. 
this arm is supposed to raise as you click this lever and as you can see no matter how many times I click mine it will not raise the arm <sighs> come on work 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 now I don't know if any of you savvy toy people out there know how to fix this but if you do and you know how to take him apart and redo the ratcheting action maybe the gears are just slipping in there uh, let me know because I'm I'm willing to try if there's a way of getting him apart if any of you toy modders out there know about how to do that it would be greatly appreciated otherwise he'll just make a good display as he is I think it's closed I mean everything on the outside looks mint right he's beautiful Gonna spin him back around for you get a good look at the front again Steve Austin the six million dollar man and then uh, the rest of his clothing as you go up to his lovely shoes and socks he's even got tread I mean what are they they look like cons right is that converse but the striping of Adida now there's only two stripes not three So there you go, folks, the 1975 Steve Austin, Colonel Steve Austin, the $6 million man from Kenner. I got to say, I love him. I'm just as happy with this guy as I was when I was a child. I, I mean, wow. I am so happy I found him. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Discount Stores. Woohoo! And that about wraps up our $6 million man with his packaging. I'm John, your host of the Super Awesome Geek Show podcast. And follow us on Twitter. I love to talk on Twitter. I'm always chatting on Twitter with all kinds of guys out there. And uh, love sharing. I love sharing the, uh, the videos. I love sharing the pictures that you guys put up. So, uh, yeah, let's keep it going. You know, I have that, I have that feeling. One for all, all for one. Um, there's room at the top for everybody and you guys on Twitter have been amazing all the people I've met Sharing liking and we've been doing it a lot. We've been exchanging it. You know, I, I share all your stuff I like all your stuff you guys share my stuff and if we all work together we can all Make each other that much better and like I say there's room at the top for everyone um, Yeah, thank you guys. I, I love I love all you guys and everything all the help that you've been doing and all the support and of course on my end I will continue to support all you guys so on Twitter at Awesome Geek Show find us on iTunes Super Awesome Geek Show uh, it's our podcast together with Mad B, Jason Rigdon, Eric Locke Rob Clifford, Lee Grooms we uh, talk all things geeky and occasionally have other guests like Justin and Miguel and Taylor, Tyler, sorry, I keep saying Taylor, but I meant Tyler, and uh, Ziggy's been on. Yeah. Good times, good times. And we've had a lot of guests lately, lots and lots of comic book guests, game designer guests, even had some film stars and actors. So uh, we get all kinds of people on our show, and we got a lot of good ones lined up coming down the road on that podcast. All right, hope you join me again for another exciting video. Subscribe, and I'll be putting up more. I really think I want to do a Flash Gordon figure next. Something else that, from my past that was, um, you know, a, a de near and dear to my heart that I had recently found within the last year. Oh, Cray! Hey, hey, hey! I didn't, I didn't, uh, 
show you the plastic uh, rubberized arm skin feature. One sec, real quick. Let me zoom in on that before we cut out, all right? All right, there it is. The rubberized arm. I do not dare try to roll that skin up. Because to me, it looks brittle and like it's going to just disintegrate at any moment. So I will not be able to see his bionic plug-in features or whatever they were. Just because I don't want to risk it. Alright, there you go. The last play feature. Pull down his... his uh, sleeve back down his knees are just a tiny bit loose but not loose enough to where he won't stand it's clear a kid played with him but they kept him pretty good you know Stand up. There we go. For Colonel Steve Austin and the Super Awesome Geek Show, I'm out. Keep it geeky out there, everyone. And have fun playing with your toys. Because that's what they're there for.